Liverpool are on their way to the Champions League one quarter finals after Roberto Firmino ignited the late spark of the Italian. Liverpool walked through a storm whipped up by Inter Milan, a spell of sustained pressure that would have left lesser teams black and blue, and showed all their European experience to take control of this Champions League round of 16 tie with late goals from Roberto Firmino and Imo Sola. Even when Ivan Perisic was causing havoc down Liverpool's right, Jurgen Klopp's side stayed calm, Virgil van Dijk and Ibrahima Konate intercepted well, and the visitors hit back. There is an intelligence and resilience to Liverpool, and a strength in depth on the bench that proved vital. The size of Liverpool's achievement was shown in that this was only Inter's fourth defeat at San Siro in 37 games in all competitions, and the first by two goals. Firmino's role at the club occasionally gets questioned, but his movement remains so intelligent as he showed with his stealthy run to meet Andy Robertson's corner. Robertson had endured some difficult moments, but delivered. So had Trent Alexander-Arnold, but his ball helped set up Sulla's goal. Sulla extended his club record of scoring in eight successive European away games. He moved on to 34 European goals for Liverpool, moving closer to Steven Gerrard's record of 41. This was end-to-end, -end, Liverpool starting strongly, Inter responding superbly, laying siege to the visitors' area at times with Perisic outstanding, but there is such resilience in this side of Klopp's and Firmino's header stunned the host. The mist had already arrived, drifting in through the lights, descending towards the pitch as if eager to be ringside with these heavyweights. Liverpool pressed hard, Inter countered. Stadio Main headed over, Hakan Kalhanoglu struck the bar. Denzel Dumfries and Perisic, Inter's lively wing backs, kept Robertson and Alexander Arnold wary of overcommitting. This was a proper European occasion, Inter fans unstinting in their loud support, and Liverpool's following stationed up in the freezing gods, making themselves heard. They could see this twin-track approach of Klopp's, targeting again the Champions League and also building for the future. Klopp continued his gradual rejuvenating of his team, lowering the average age. Konate, 22, again started in Europe and immediately stepped in to pinch the ball ahead of Eden Zeko. It was not the last of his important first-half interception. There was a momentous first start in the Champions League for Harvey Elliott. At 18 years and 318 days, Elliott eclipsed Alexander-Arnold's record as Liverpool's youngest player in the competition. Elliott's record-breaking presence was a wonderful reward after all the hard work he put in rehabilitating from the dislocated ankle he suffered last September. He settled quickly, hounding Marcelo Brozovic, tucking in on the left of midfield in Liverpool's 4-3-3, but swift to advance. He soon had a shot blocked then slid a pass left to Robertson. Elliot looked unfazed by the occasion, the majesty of the setting, the stature of the opposition and the racket from the Inter fan. Fabinho, playing his 150th game for Liverpool, sat in the centre while Thiago Alcantara floated around elegantly, taking a short pass from Robertson and switching play with a raking 60-yarder to release Sulla. Placed under concerted pressure in the second period, Liverpool looked confident in these early stages. Diogo Hoda glided past Arturo Vidal's challenge. Robertson curled a free kick over, main headed over. Yet in turn were stirring, pressing more forcefully, attacking more threateningly, especially out wide, their Liverpool's fullbacks were given the severest test of their stamina and positioning. Inter's ultras sang of their 2010 Champions League triumph, praising Diego Melito and Julio Cesar, and had plenty to sing about with some of their team's play last night. Inter's home record was strong. They had lost only three of their previous 36 games in all competitions, and their threat was clear when they broke, working the ball quickly towards Zeko and Lautaro Martinez. Kalhanoglu struck the bar. Perisic escaped Alexander-Arnold, who was fortunate Konate covered across to block. Over on the other flank, the duel between a Scottish town and the Scottish international continued apace, Dumfries occasionally getting the better of Robertson. Liverpool responded, red shirts in full-on pressing mode, not allowing Inter to settle. When Samir Handanovic tried to build through his defenders, Sulla raced in, then Alexander-Arnold, then Elliot, then Robertson. It was a red swarm. When Perisic tried to force his way down the inside left channel, Konate stepped across him, muscling him away allowing Alisson to dive in and reclaim possession. Fabinho was a wall in midfield that Inter bounced off. Fabinho was a source of attacks, too, guiding Liverpool upfield. From one surge, Sulla was fouled, and Alexander-Arnold whipped his free kick just wide. Inter were building, though, and Konate put in another important tackle on Martinez, then Milan Skriniar headed wide, then Martinez's threat was seen off by Robertson. Liverpool became sloppy, Elliot lost the ball, so did Robertson, and a furious Klopp was out of his technical area, shouting at his players. The Polish referee, Simon Marciniak, 
upset Liverpool by blowing for halftime when Solo was breaking. Klopp had already sprinted to the tunnel, racing down the stairs, heading for the dressing room to plan his response. He made his first change at the break, sending on Firmino for Hoda, but Inter simply tightened their control. Van Dijk and Konate both made vital interceptions after Perisic again caused Alexander-Arnold problems. Klopp sought to wrest back control just before the hour by introducing Naby Keita to help protect Alexander-Arnold. Jordan Henderson arrived to bring some leadership and direction to central midfield with Luis Diaz coming on wide. Main, Elliott and Fabinho made way. Diaz provided a welcome outlet and a relief for Liverpool's hard-pressed defense. But the substitute that made the most difference was Firmino, who took his chance expertly with 15 minutes remaining. Arturo Vidal, who was excellent, gave the ball away and Alexander-Arnold won a corner off Brozovic. Robertson, beneath the hopeful eye of the Coppets on tour, curled the ball over, and Firmino timed his run well, beating Alessandro Batoni to the ball and steering his header past Handanovic. Eight minutes later, Liverpool were in dreamland. Alexander-Arnold is too good to be kept quiet for long and he drove in a kick that Van Dijk headed back. Stefan de Vrij should have cleared more convincingly. Konate leapt out of the way and Sola finished. Round of 16 fixtures Tuesday, February 22nd, Chelsea v Lille, Villarreal v Juventus. Wednesday, February 23rd, Atletico Madrid v Manchester United, Benfica v Ajax. Tuesday, March 8th, Bayern Munich v Red Bull Salzburg, Liverpool v Inter Milan. Wednesday, March 9th, Manchester City v Sporting Lisbon, Real Madrid v Paris Saint-Germain. Tuesday, March 15th, Ajax v Benfica. Manchester United v Atletico Madrid. Wednesday, March 16th, Juventus v Villarreal, Lille v Chelsea. How they rated Inter Milan S. Handanovic 6, M. Skriniar 6, S. De Vrij 7, Abatoni 7, D. Dumfries 7, Avidal 5, M. Brozovic 6, H. Kalhanoglu 7, I. Perisic 7, Izeko 6, L. Martinez 6. Dubs not used are Gagliardini, Accordes, D. D'Ambrosio, M. Sangali, D. Carboni. F. K. Sado, I. Radu. Liverpool, Alisson 6, T. Alexander Arnold 6, Icon 8 7, V. Van Dyke 6, A. Robertson 6, H. Elliott 6, Fabinho 7, Tiago 7, M. Sola 7, D. Hoda 6, S. Main 6. Subs not used, C. Kelleher, J. Gomez, A. Oxlade Chamberlain, T. Minamino, K. Tsimikas, D. Origi, J. Matip.